Hi, I'm Shelly Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts, and thanks for joining me again for another mini album tutorial. This tutorial features the DBS Steampunk Days paper collection and embellishment collection. So let's take a look at what we'll be making today. So let's take a look at what we'll be making today. This is an 8.5 by 6.5 mini album with a 3.5 inch spine. And this has a 3D cutout and some pop-ups. Page one. This is a fold out and it's dimensionalized so you can get quite a bit in here. And I just made a few of these type, which are really nice. We got some pockets. And over here, fold out, pocket, and on this page is where we have the uh, pop out. And then I just did that. And then there's two large um, pockets back here to get photos in and out. And then here, I left it to where you can just place a photo. And then here. And this is magnetic. Fold that up. Fold that down, another pocket down here. This folds out. And we have another fold out here. We have two large pockets on these. And then here I just have a band that is magnetic so you can actually put more uh, like free floating picture mats in there. Here's a pocket. This folds out. We have another pocket here. And then for this, this is to where you can actually slide behind to get a photo in there or if you want to do some sort of photo mat in there. This flips up. Down. This is a pocket and it folds out. And then the final page is this. We have a small pocket over here and the two large pockets in the back. Let's move on to our materials list. Materials list. Let's first start off with what I'm using. I'm using two pieces of 12 by 12 uh, black and it's medium weight chipboard. And this is for my cover and my spine of my album. And the best way to purchase these, you can probably get these at your local craft store um, is buying them single sheets. But uh, the most e economical way that saves you money is to buy them in a value pack. Um, the value packs uh, that I carry are, I think you get 25 sheets in a bundle. 
Um, the only setback is is that uh, the weight of it is about four pounds, a little about four and a half pounds. So um, if you are living outside the United States, uh, you're an international customer, you might want to look uh, for something closer. Now because we are covering um, our album and we're wrapping the edges, if all you have is a natural color like the craft or whatever, uh, you're good to go with that. Okay, um, one of the main ingredients is the paper and this is my own line, um, the designs by Shelley and it's Steampunk Days and there is a glare. There's 24 double-sided uh, 12 by 12 sheets. You get two of each design. It is a premium paper uh, cardstock. And um, let me take this out. You can see the cover a little better without the glare. Um, it's pretty good stuff. Actually, it's exceptional. It's really uh, nice quality. I also call it DBS brand. And that's what we'll be using for this album. And um, there is a lot of just gorgeous uh, prints in this. Um, when I designed this, I wanted to make sure that you can get masculine out of it, feminine out of it. Uh, it's real versatile, and uh, it, it works really well. It's, it's, it's not all grunge, and um, I, I think people that have seen it and have purchased it so far have... Um, I've gotten nothing but uh, great uh, feedback on it so the next thing is an excuse my crinkly mess here I've taken it out of the package but uh, this is eight and a half by eleven it's by coordinations it's black cat and this is the value pack where you get 50 sheets and uh, it's a 65 pound uh, weight it's it's good for the albums it will last um, it is, I do recommend, um, even if you're not buying this brand, there's plenty other brands out there that offer value packs. And you're going to get uh, the most bang for your buck uh, buying a, a value pack because we do use a lot of this. You are going to need Tyvek. Tyvek is a specialized paper. Um, it's very hard to tear. Now, um, most Tyvek comes in like Tyvek envelopes, like a 13 by 16. There's all sorts of sizes. Um, you will need two strips off of it. And that is for reinforcing your hinges. As far as adhesives, now score tape, I always recommend when putting and assembling and laying your base pages down. This is the quarter inch and um, it's inexpensive. You'll need a roll of this. Um, in here, I, I also got the half inch. It is not necessary. It's more of a convenience for me to use the half inch. You get the same amount of yardage you would in the quarter inch. However, being that it's half inch wide, is it costs a little more. And I, like I said, I'm just gonna use this for um, assembly of the uh, album for convenience. Uh, glue. You will want a good glue. Now this one I recommend to everybody because it's universal. It's called Art Glitter Designer um, Glue. There's no glitter in it. Uh, that's the brand name. Uh, what I like about this is that it dries clear. It's not a greasy. So if you get a little bit um, that squirts out the side, you put a little too much, it's easy to wipe off without making blemishes on your paper. Um, I also recommend uh, with any glue that you buy that you buy a metal tip that you can fit on there that's going to control the flow that comes out. You don't need a whole lot of this. Um, I usually, to avoid clogging, is I actually keep the, the pin in at all times. Um, this glue is, like I said, universal. It's good for paper, metal, resin, plastics, wood, everything. Uh, if you do decide to store yours like I do, um, I use mine all the time. However, if, however, if you let it sit with the pen in for a few days or a week, you will notice that the first squirting of it, a little bit of rust is going to come out. No biggie, just squirt it out, you're good to go, and um, no clogging. And, and then you don't have to boil your tip 
all the time and uh, clean it or unclog it. I did use uh, 3D foam squares in this for mounting in dimension uh, for dimension on uh, several things throughout. Um, I'm using the one where it gives me two sizes in here. So um, that's what I'm using. Inks. Now, you don't have to use what I'm using. Check your drawer to see what you have. Um, I don't carry this ink up ink it up brand. This is just a silver and um, I did use silver but you can find this anywhere at your craft stores. Uh, I am using the Toffee Crunch and it's by Memento and I do carry this brand. It's a very good brand. Uh, this is just like a light brown and I do inking around the edge especially when we're fussy cutting. You'll want uh, some black ink handy. This is Tuxedo Black. And Teal Zeal is one that I used uh, a little, it, it, not a whole lot. It's just a teal color. So if you have something close to that, you know, you're good to go. And what I use that on, and I'm going to show you here in a moment, is there are embellishments that go with the Steampunk Days collection. Um, we have the time pieces. Now these are wood, and they are engraved, laser engraved. And um, you can dab some of your ink on there, and you can change the whole look of it. You can use silver, you can use teal, you can do anything. Uh, the owls, there's three in a pack. You get two smaller, and then, of course, the large. And it's supposed to be small, medium, large in there. But as you can see on this one, I did dab some teal uh, along there just to see what it would do. And I, I thought it looked great. So. So you'll want a pack of those. These are gold resin um, pieces to the collection. And that's used. And then we have our wooden uh, gears. And I did use the silver on a couple of the gears. And you can use silver. You can dab it with the black ink. You can just make all sorts of, of different colors, um, different effects, I should say with uh, your inks on these pieces. The wood just absorbs the ink and it sticks and it's great. You're going to want some uh, magnets and these are the 3 8 by 1 16th inch uh, thickness. They are really strong magnets. Um, you will need these dies that were used in this tutorial heartfelt creations regal borders and pockets uh, the number on that is hcd1-779 i also used the spellbinders curved borders 2 and that's an s5-201 now if you don't have a die cutting machine um, you can use like a Martha Stewart deep edge punch where it's the deeper. Uh, you will have to accommodate for uh, the different sizes here and uh, measurements. So if you are a beginner, um, I do recommend you use exactly what I'm using. It will be easier unless you're pretty uh, crafty and can figure things out. Also, you'll want uh, some black ribbon for your side closure that attaches to our dritz. This is 3 8 of an inch wide. You can go wider than that if you'd like. And you're going to need dritz. And that is for our side closure. Three come into a packet, so you'll have enough to do three albums. This is the antique brass. I am using black brass on the album. Uh, you have a choice, antique brass, black brass, or um, nickel plated. You'll want a binder clip handy in case you need it. So let's talk about some things that we're going to need um, as far as tools and or equipment. You'll want a scoring board. You will want your paper cutter. You will want a ruler, a pencil, 
a pen, craft knife, a couple binder clips might be handy for you, a cutting mat so you don't ruin your surface, and uh, I have my two scissor sizes here, my fussy cutting scissors or small snips, and then of course I have my larger ones where needed. Uh, if you have a hot glue gun, sometimes for quick tacking, I do use that. So the first cut we're going to do on each of our 12 by 12 is we're going to measure over 8.5 inches and cut it. We're at this point. Don't throw this away. We need that. We're just going to measure on over six and a half inches now and cut it. And you're going to do that on your other piece as well. This is everything that you should have. Find your two that are eight and a half by six and a half. Set that off to the side. You will have two pieces that are five and a half by eight and a half. Put these in uh, off to the side. We won't be using these for the project. You can make smaller albums with this. You will have two of these. On this one, we're going to measure over eight and a half inches and cut it. This we don't need. Set that off to the side. This is your spine piece that is three and a half inches wide. Now, we have this extra one. We need this because it's going to be our template. So measure over four and a half inches and cut it. This piece we don't need. Stick off to the side. This is our template. We're going to need that. Okay, we're not going to uh, assemble this until we get our cover cut out. So with this, grab your pencil. and a ruler and all we're going to do is have one inch. All I want you to do is just make a line right like that. Now from the top one and a half inches and make a line. Now we know how far we need to come up with this and we have our side. So it should keep you fairly straight. Take your pencil and we are just going to go around the outline of this. And we're going to need our cutting mat and our craft knife next. You're going to want a fresh blade so that we get a good cut. Now, um, if when you were going to be cutting this out with your craft knife. If you get a little bit off, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. We will be wrapping the edges of this as well as wrapping in uh, through. So it will cut, uh, uh, you know, cover up some of those rough edges. So all I'm going to do is start by my outline here. Trying to keep it as straight as possible. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I can get through the chipboard. And usually you can feel it when it hits the mat that you've gotten through. So we're just going to go and do that all the way around until we can get this piece out. Okay, I got mine out. And as you can see, mine isn't completely perfect, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and grab a piece of 8.5 by 11 black piece of cardstock. And all we're going to do is place this right on down and try to make this as even as possible. Oh, first what we're going to want to do is measure over and cut it down to a 10.5 inch size. All right, we are in business now. Okay, I'm just going to place this down and I'm going to be in one inch all the way across around. The easiest way to get your creases is just to go like this.
and it doesn't matter if you get a little bit crooked, I guarantee. Okay, once you have that, what you can do is uh, just snip, let's see, which way were we going? We're going this way. We're going to snip right here, right here, Once you've got these snipped, all we're going to do, as you can see, this is where the flap is, is come in from the side and cut right at an angle. Whoops, no tearing. I didn't quite get that. That's, a, that's okay. Okay. You don't have to be real super accurate there. Okay, we are going to be placing this over, okay? And uh, the end result is we are just going to place that down. We are gonna bring in these first, and then these will tuck over in. However, let's get our score tape. And um, like I said, I um, am going to use the half inch sparingly in the building of this part, and then I'll go back to the quarter inch. Uh, I am just going to place it first off so it grabs right around the opening of this, all the way around. And the, I do have this to where this is the front. The front is going to have the, the smaller uh, edge here being the one inch. And this is going to be the left side of the uh, cover, the front cover anyway. do something like that. Okay, I am going to remove my score tape now. Okay, let's go ahead and face this so our flaps are up. The first thing I'm going to do is just bring down the bottom edge right to the, sco the scoring that we did, and I'm going to place this down. Okay, at this point you are free to use your glue to tack that down, or you can use the score tape. I am choosing to use score tape. Easy. And we are going to bring in these bottom flaps first. So first things first, I'm going to and pull that over tightly. Same thing here. Now I'm going to take off the sides. This is where I'm going to bring in a little glue here. And I'm just going to wrap that over tightly. Get rid of any glue that seeps out. Perfect. So this is what we have so far. Grab your uh, cutting mat really quick, slip it underneath. I'm looking at it like this, and all I'm going to do is just do an X as best I can. It does not have to be absolutely perfect, because the rest of this 
I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to get in there and bring it in just about to that corner. And this is where we're going to use our glue. Okay. Whoops, I forgot. We do need to snip off a little bit here. So just kind of, that was dumb of me. Just wrap it in like so. Very dumb. Let's cut that off. We don't need that much because it's going to overhang. Shame on me. Okay, pull that in. We're going to pull that side in. And I do need to put a little more glue down here, it looks like. Because I cut off a lot of it. Pull that side in. And that side. Don't have to worry about that. Our paper is going to cover that anyway. So if you get a little bit of goobies around there, don't worry about it. Okay, so this is what you should have. Very easy, very simple. Let's grab our back panel chipboard. Grab a piece of cardstock and measure over to ten and a half inches and cut that. There is no cutting through the chipboard. This is our back of our album. We're just going to do the same exact thing we did though for covering it. We're going to bring in our top, our bottom. We're going to fold in our sides to get a crease there for a good fit. We're going to snip I always do it on that corner and then on the cover too. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing over here over here. I'm going to line the outside with score tape. And because the back cover is only having, you know, paper down there, we will be having the Dritz uh, side closure, so we want to make sure that we get some you have enough score tape if you need to do two lines down one side because on the back when we're looking at it we do have the metal attachment we just want to make sure that there is enough adhesive over there to hold that paper down so there's no pulling up so you'll want a couple strips there and then all I'm gonna do is do something like this and then I can just use a little bit of glue remove the score tape And again, placing it right down there in that groove, making sure it's even. Oops. Pressing down. Now, all we have to do is apply glue or your score tape here and here. Fold these in first, and then we're going to fold those in like before. So let's go ahead and do that. Yours should look like mine. Okay, let's set this off to the side. Let's grab our spine piece that's three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches long. We are going to wrap that as Grab well. a piece of cardstock and we are going to measure over and cut that at ten and a half inches. Now all we need to do is measure over five and a half inches and cut it. We are going to do the same exact thing as we did with the covers. We're going to fold it on all sides.
and then we're going to make our snips right down through here. Okay, so then all we're going to do is make our snips on the side. We're going to put score tape right on one side of this chipboard spine. And you should be just fine with one down the middle because this is going to be facing outward. If you want to put a little bit of glue there too, you can. And once we pull off the score tape, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put this down, wrap the bottom and the top down first, and then the sides. So let's this do that. This is what yours should look like. And we are ready for our tie back. You're going to cut two strips of Tyvek and they're going to be two inches wide by eight inches tall. You're going to score each one of these at one inches. It's going to make your life easier for, for uh, getting these folded over. And getting it to fit get a nice straight line here and once we do that we are going to want to grab our score tape and again I am going to be using my half inch on this and when you place your score tape do not place it on your your scoring line you want to uh, keep it off that and we're going to place a score date score tape down the sides here I thought I could get away from work and hear their call, so intermission. Okay, so I do need to uh, run into work really quick and cover for an employee's lunch hour. We are down a person today, and then I'll be back to complete this part and move along. So one thing you want to do is you're going to do this to both of them. And um, one thing when you're done placing your score tape is you're going to flip it over. If you see any white score tape that's hanging over, you're definitely going to want to clip it. So let's do the same thing on this one. Okay, we're going to start uh, one at a time here. And it may be easier for you to... Um, work on the spine, putting these both on the spine first, and then we'll bring over our chipboard. So I'm going to remove just one side of my score tape. Now with the sticky side down, and here is our um, fold. What you're going to do, and I'm going to turn this, is we are going to center this between here and here. And we are going to put that right up on the edge. And if you're a little uh, off here, it's okay. We're just going to do this a little bit different. Okay. So as you can see, I have a, actually a little bit more black here than here. It's not going to make a difference. Leave that on for now. Let's do the same thing on this side. And those of you that have taken my tutorials before, uh, don't rush ahead and uh, cut your inner pages yet or your hinges. We're actually doing a new type of hinge and um, learn something new. You probably already know how to do that, but it's based off the um, 7x9 Heartfelt Creations, um, those pre-made albums and how they did their hinges. So I wanted to show people how you can do that as well on some of these smaller albums. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over exactly the same. And again, my my fold is going to be place, uh, facing that way. To get yourself completely lined up, it may be easier. I'm going to set this off to the side. It may be easier if you put your ruler up and you 
line this up so it's going to go on straight and just make a little pencil mark where the top of this is supposed to be. All right, fold outward here. And I'm just going to bring it right on up there and the fold is going to meet the edge. And I may be off just a hair here. I can't quite see very well over this without getting my head of video. Okay, and then I'm going to smooth that down. If you get a wrinkle like this, it's not the end of the world because it gets covered anyway. Okay, let's grab our back piece. And this is so simple. All you do is butt this up next to your spine. Make sure you're even here and across the top. This is where we're going to remove our score tape. And I'm going to realign my thing here. Okay, so just butt that right in next to it. Don't leave any spaces. You don't need it for that. And you just push it right on over. I'm going to remove the score tape on this side. Now it's important that you get the cover in um, the right way, so we're going to do that together once I get my score tape to work with me. <laughs> oh. Seriously, come on now. There. I think I got it. Perfect. Okay. So, we are looking at the inside. Your smaller is now on the outside. The thicker width here is going to be on the inside. So, just butt that right on up, making sure you're even on the top and the bottom. Pushing it against and running that right on over. Okay? As you can see, I'm a little off. I'm a little crooked because my the tie back is hard to fold and get um, exactly straight, I'm not going to worry about that because my hinges or my cover to cover this is going to cover that. That's what's so nice about these style of uh, mini albums is that uh, sometimes you don't have to be exactly accurate. It's going to get covered anyway. So let's get some black cardstock out. And uh, what we're going to do is we're looking at our paper like this. I want you to measure over eight and a quarter inches and cut it. Okay, I've cut that off. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to measure over two and let's do two and a quarter. Two and a quarter inches and cut it and then you're going to cut another strip that's two and a quarter inches and cut it. Place it down on your um, scoring board and you are going to, at one and one eighth of an inch, you're going to score it. If you have the same um, scoring score pal as I do, you'll notice that it does not give you that option. There is no uh, one eighth notch for you. In that case, all I did was measure over, put a pencil mark where it's supposed to be and then I just kind of moved my paper over. And I did that on both of them, making sure I'm straight here. I think I'm going to grab the scoring board from the store. I've got two of the Martha Stewart ones that work really good. It has all those extra little notches that we need. All we're going to do now is just fold over and flip it over. And we're going to do score tape, but this time with the score tape, we don't have to, if you're using the quarter inch, you don't have to make sure it's completely covered. All we need to do is place one down on this side, and I'm using the half inch right now, so that might not make sense to you. And then one over here, so you will have some uh, black in between if you're using that width. I'm just going to use this. Like I said, it's a convenience thing here. And we're going to do this on both of them. Again, very important, you flip this over. And if you have any overage, you are definitely going to want to snip all of that off. You don't want any of the score tape uh, showing or peeking out. Um, okay, 
this is uh, the easy part. I'm going to remove one side. And I'm going to move this so I can see what I'm doing here. And, and all I'm going to do is make sure that I'm going to be covering both sides. So if I was to place this down like this, and actually it'd be wiser for me to start on this side where it kind of went up higher than that, just to make sure that it's going to get covered. So I'm just going to place it right here. And I'm going to pull that right on down on the crease to cover the other. And then I can open it up. And I'm going to remove the score tape on this side. And I'm going to carefully push it over to avoid getting wrinkles. If you start in the middle and you smooth out, it's helpful. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So let's go ahead and get our score tape on there and place it, making sure once again that this is going to be uh, even with the top of this one. And um, this is the part where you want to really try to keep it even. It, it kind of matters as far as looks if someone was to really critique your album. So let's do that. Okay, this is where we are. For those of you that did not get exactly straight, you got one more opportunity to straighten it up a little bit. So we just cut on to get our strips off this. So this should be the perfect eight and a quarter inches. We're gonna measure over three and a half inches and cut. Now before we do anything, this is the part where you're gonna lay it down right on that spine. As you can see, everything gets covered up and it looks really nice and neat. However, when you pull up the sides, you want to make sure that the side of this is not going to catch on your paper we're about ready and on this side. In some, mine's fitting perfect. In some cases, though, we do need to make a little bit of a trim mark in order for when these uh, come up they don't curl your edges, but I'm just fine here. And notice how I'm laying this with uh, the top and the bottom. And that's what's going to cover up any imperfections from down here. Okay, because our hinges are going to place on this, this is where score tape is recommended over glue and I am going to put more score tape on key points on this piece so that there is no chance when I do put the hinge down on top of it that it's going to bow or lift. So depending on um, where you'll be placing your, um, if you're doing your own album in the future, depending on where you'll be placing your hinge is where you should put your score tape um, to make sure that it's on the hinge. So um, place another one and you don't have to measure, you're gonna hit it somewhere in there. If you're using the quarter inch, um, you'll wanna come in a little, of course, uh, right in through there. So all I'm gonna do is this, there's no chance of me missing any of those hinges. And if it makes you unsure or worried, you can always put a thin, now you can put a thin uh, layer uh, very lightly. You don't want any bubbling on this of glue, but you should be just fine. Okay, moment of truth. I am going to take off my score tape and I'm gonna carefully place this over that spine and line it up. And I'm going to go with the top first. And sometimes it's easier if you're a tight fit. I am a tight fit, but it does clear on both sides. Um, I'm just going to pull this side up, put this over to the left. I know that it's going to clear. I know where it's supposed to be. 
And now I'm going to place this down. And hopefully, if I did a good job, it won't catch and it does not. Okay, let's move on to our inner pages and our uh, easy uh, hinging style. Okay, so one thing I want to say before we go any farther is, um, and most of you already know this who have taken my tutorials, is I like to... Um, use up the paper to the best um, uh, of our ability throughout the tutorial. So you're going to make a pile even uh, of scrap pieces. Even if it's small like this, don't throw it away until the project is completely done. Um, there may, uh, it's called a, a reserve pile or scrap pile is what I call it. So during the tutorial you may uh, hear me say um, in our reserves, grab a piece of cardstock that looks like this, and I'll give you a measurement of what we're looking for. Uh, that way, we're not cutting into new cardstock when there's a piece that's usable. Um, I also um, have you make a pile of our designer paper, and we keep everything until the end of the project as well. Let's start on our hinging and our papers. Um, go ahead and grab five pieces of your black eight and a half by eleven cardstock. Okay, I've got my five pieces. On these, each one of these, we're going to measure over to eight and a quarter inches and cut. Okay, I've cut all mine down, so now it's eight and a quarter inches this way. Now looking at your paper like this, and this is where the difference comes in for those of you that have made the these albums with me before. We're going to make all one piece and it's also going to serve as our hinge. We are going to measure over 6 and 13 sixteenths and we're going to cut them each one at that. Um, those of you that um, aren't real sure about where that is on your ruler or on your cutting board or your paper cutter. Uh, I do have a tutorial out that helps explain what a sixteenth and eighth and how to read it. Um, you might want to check that out. I'm going to bring the ruler on up here as close as I can. Okay, here is six inches. We have six and a half here, as you can see. The next larger line is six and three quarters. See that little line right after it? That little one? That is six and thirteen sixteenths. That is where we will be cutting our paper. Each one. All the smaller pieces go in our reserve pile, scrap pile. Let's grab our scoring board and on, we're going to do all of these the same. We're going to stick it down to where we are 6 and 13 sixteenths across and we're 8 and a half this way. This is real simple. At 6 and a quarter inches, we're going to score them, each one of these. 6 and a quarter inches. So let's go ahead and do that for all of these and then we're going to carefully fold on our score lines. Okay, so I've gone ahead and folded on my score lines on each one of these. I am going to use my half inch because, like I said, it's a convenience for me. Um, in all my other tutorials, I was using the quarter inch wide, and you would just lay two strips on each on the right side of the score mark. Um, one thing is it's very important that you do not get your score tape on your uh, score line. Um, you want to keep it just to the right side. And we're just going to put it right here, lining it up with the right side here. The trick is to this, in order to have a nice looking hinge and not to have a mess, is you definitely want to make sure that if you have any overhang of score tape, 
it gets cleaned off, all of it. So we're going to do that with each one of these. Okay, here's the easy part, and we will do this. Uh, this is off to the left side. Here's our spine. This is so simple. Um, I'm going to remove the score tape off one of my hinges and all we're going to do is bring this to the edge right here of this middle piece and we are going to make sure the top and the bottom lines up with that uh, middle piece of cardstock we put down. I am going to turn mine so that I can see what I'm doing here and you should be able to see too. Um, again, the top I'm just going to place right up there and then the bottom, I gotta see what I'm doing here, is going to go, whoops, I didn't quite line that up, I got crazy. Alright, here we go, the top and the bottom. That's how easy that is, okay? Okay, next one, so easy. I'm gonna remove the score tape, and all I'm going to do once I remove that is I'm just gonna bring this and this and this right up against this, slide it right up, and it's gonna mount down. This is just so easy, and I'm gonna do this with each one of them. Top. I gotta turn it to get me straight. So here's there, and here's there. Just like that. Grab the next one. I think you can see. I'll do it at a different angle here for you. The top in the bottom and I'm just going right up next to that hinge and pressing down. Each one is going to be done like this. Top, the bottom, and then the last one. same way. And there you have it. And that's what it looks like. Easy. Let's get into our paper pack. And this is resealable, so when the project's done, you can definitely use this. I'm going to set mine off to the side there. And I'm going to keep this separate from my scrap paper. What we're looking for in here is, let's see, which page is that? I think it's this one. Let's go ahead and grab this one. And all we're going to do with this is we are going to measure over six inches and cut that. Stick this in your reserve pile. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, if you looked at your paper like this and measure over eight and a half inches, you will notice that you will start cutting off some of this fin down here. Well, what we're going to do is we are going to take a pencil and right above that fin, that's where we are going to cut so we don't cut any of this. And we don't have to worry about it because we do have our topper on the front of cover of our album. We're going to work with this. Now, this part if you were to grab your album, go ahead and open it up and lay it flat. If you were to push it all the way over to the right, 
leaving a little bit of black here. You'll have a little black here and here. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, and don't worry about over here or anything. The first thing that we want to do is make sure it's lined up pretty straight. I'm going to put a binder clip down to hold it because I'm going to flip this over. And I'll put one right here. Okay, flip that one down. At this point, and make sure that it didn't slip on you. Matter of fact, mine did. And I will be crooked if I start cutting. So I'm going to fix mine really quick. Make sure. Right there. Okay, I'm going to grab a black pen, and the reason why is because I don't want to push too hard with a pencil and poke through. All I'm going to do is trace the inside of this. That's it. Take this back off. Now, you can do this with your cutting mat and your craft knife. Um, however, you have a cutter that allows you to drop the blade wherever you want it's always best to use something like that if you can keep yourself straight and then just cut along like that however with me I know me and uh, I'm gonna do this by hand at least to get this started and all I'm gonna do is because I want to save this center piece. I was thinking you're okay. And I'm going to actually cut just on the outside of that line. Set this off to the side in your reserves. Bring our album back and put it over where we had it before, like so. Now, like I said, you're not going to worry about too much if, you're, if your line isn't straight. You can always try to trim and get it straighter because we do have a that overhang on the front. Uh, that comes down slightly and we do have a border that goes around there. Okay, grab this out of reserves. This is going to be for our back panel. Measure over 8 and 3 eighths and cut it. It's going to bring you underneath the um, actually it's going to bring you right here so you are going to get a clipping. It's going to be somewhere in that neighborhood. So let's go ahead and put this on our paper cutter and cut that. Okay, let's go ahead and check our work before we do anything. I am going to just flip this right on over. Put all these back so it's easier to see because everything is black. It's hard to tell between. And if I was to bring this up over to the left and leave a little bit of black I'm going to fit nicely so we can set that off to the side what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be putting our spine paper on first and then this is going to overlap over it in your paper pack you will find this sheet on the other side it looks like this Let's measure over five and three quarters of an inch and cut it. I'm going to stick this one off in reserves. Measure over eight and three eighths of an inch and cut it. Okay. Flip this on over so that we are five and three quarters of an inch wide. Now we don't have to have even um, scoring on each side. It isn't going to make a difference. So the first thing that we want to do is just start this off at one and a quarter inches. Let's do a score. 
we're going to do a soft bend, meaning we're not going to turn it and crease it. We're just going to do a little soft, like so. If you were to stick this right there in the front of your album and hold it and set your album up like this, okay, and you can just place your hand right like this and just hold with your finger part of that tab. All you need to do is push your hand like this and pinch it over there where that crease should be. Okay. Then what you're going to do is stick it on your scoring board and score where that is. And you're going to do a soft bend like so. Now if you were to grab this and place it over your spine, you should be fitting nice to where when we do put the score tape down, it's going to go flush. Okay, so we have got our soft and we're not going to go and crease it on over right yet or anything like that. Let's go ahead and get our score tape out. Um, with this, I am just going to use my quarter inch. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to put score tape on those creases. Um, I'm going to go just on the inside of that. And I'm going to do this on there, on each little panel. So I have this one over here. I'm going to try to make sure I'm not on my score line there. And I'm just going to bring it on up and around. Now for the rest on in here, you don't need that much score tape. You don't have to cover it or anything. Uh, I'm going to start right down the middle and I'm just going to stick just like that. That's it. Okay, I'm going to start with putting this on the front. And as I do this, I'm going to, uh, you might want to watch first, and I'll kind of explain what I'm doing and some helpful tips on getting it on there straight, and maybe it will help you get all the score tape off. All I'm doing is taking the score tape off this first panel. I'm leaving the rest on for now. I will flip this in a minute um, so that you can see the front while I put it on and then I can maybe maneuver the album. Uh, the first thing is, is I like to leave the score tape on this so that it doesn't grab and, and when I'm not ready for it. All I'm going to do is place that back piece and push the spine, um, push this down on the spine, okay? Um, I'm going to look and I'm going to be even and here I'm going to push in from the middle first, okay, and then I'm going to smooth up. I'm going to attempt to do this now. When I do this, sometimes mine gets on wrong, but you will want to do this probably while it's standing up. Okay, so I did that and I've got it here. I'm going to push in here and then I can smooth it up and down. Okay, so once you've done that, now you can take off the rest of your score tape. Because the chances are this is going to wrap straight for you. And it won't be too much of a problem, but you do want to take it slow when you're doing this. Okay, we're ready. Here's the front of my album.
I'm going to hold it so that it looks uh, the back and the front are straight out like it's supposed to. Don't worry about this. I'm just looking for the album to look straight on the back and front. Okay, I'm going to place my hand over the top and um, I have my thumb down here just to hold it in place. Now I'm going to come in through the middle here on the side. Um, first the middle is what I'm going to push in. Let's see if I can get this up now. Okay, I'm going to tilt this. So I came in and I pushed from here. And you'll want to do this while it's standing up. It's going to be too hard for you, I think, if you do yours like this because it's going to fall over. But once you got that, then you can smooth it like that. Okay, I'm going to turn this so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Get my fingers in there to hold it as straight as I can. Okay, so here is the back part that hasn't been on pushing it to the middle first and then you smooth it down and up okay once you got that then just make sure you are down another thing you'll want to do is once you think you have it down grab your album and you can split it slowly do this pull it like so you will find that some of your score tape hasn't adhered down so just take your two fingers together right there and just run it right on down just like this. You're not going to hurt it. This is at least what I do. Okay, then I'm going to slowly pull it back. Now when you open it, it's going to have a nice crease and it's not going to chew up on the sides. Um, again, this paper that I have, uh, it's good stuff. The only time you're going to get on any paper, whether it be mine, uh, Bow Bunny, Graphic 45, where you've seen, where you've uh, perhaps, even Heartfelt Creation, all papers like this, that if you've ever folded a piece over and you notice it splinters kind of on the seam where you folded, um, that's normal with almost any... Um, card stocks, uh, it, you're going against the grain. And the easiest remedy for something like that is to take uh, your little ink dauber and just ink up the edges. So, but we were going with the grain so you won't have that. Okay, next thing, this. This is where uh, this is going to place. And the easiest way to line yourself up is along with these uh, striped lines that will help you keep yourself uh, even. I'm going to use my half inch and I'm going to go around this like a picture frame all, all the way around the outside. And I'm going to place it right alongside this little window cutout that I've got going here. So that that won't lift. Yeah, I've got the googles. Okay. The rest of this, all I'm going to do is just squirt my glue right down in here. I don't have to cover it completely, just a squiggly line. If you want to do over here, that's fine too. Okay, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to carefully uh, place it. Um, like I told you, just leave a little bit of black and make sure you're even from uh, the top of this uh, here where you've placed your spine paper is where your top should be. So, And if you get it off a little bit, don't go tear your paper up. We do have something that lays over the top that will cover any imperfections. So when I make these albums, I always tell people uh, a small little error could actually um, be fixed and sometimes these errors that we do, I do plenty of them, um, when I do have to go and cosmetically fix something it actually comes out better looking than what I originally had anyway so it's okay. Alright, 
I'm going to turn this so that you can see what I'm doing here. That looks good to me. I'm just going to try and keep straight with that. It's good enough for me. Great. Okay. That's on. We can definitely put the back side on. Let's just go ahead and put our score tape around the outside. And you will want to, this is going to place down uh, like this. So the gears will end up being down here. Uh, so right on underneath this side, you'll want to put two rows of score tape because that's where our uh, attachment's going to go. So that's all I'm going to do is go around here, make sure I have another row of score tape and one down the middle, and then I can just squiggle a line of glue down if I want to. And I'm going to bring this all the way over to the left, leaving a little bit of black keeping straight with the top here and here, and I'm going to place that. So let's do that. Okay, I got my Toffee Crunch out and my dauber, and I'm actually doing this after the fact. And it's not going to hurt nothing. I could have done it before, but I'm just going to do it now. It's going to give more of a, a smoky appearance around here. And you can just do a little or a lot. Like, like a vintage look. It's not going to hurt nothing. In your reserves, you will have uh, this piece of black cardstock. It is about four inches wide. We're going to measure over five and a half inches and cut that. Now, what this is for, this is going to be our backing, and it will fit nicely over the back here. But first, we need to um, put our image there. In your paper pack, you will find this. On the back is this. We do need some of this, but before we start cutting, we're going to get items that we need off of this sheet. So the first thing I want you to do is we are going to cut just below um, this. Set this off to the side. The next thing that we're going to cut is we need this band here. So we are going to, and I'm going to get my pencil out here, we're going to cut right along this black line here and right underneath this um, green trim we're going to cut there and I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is what you should have. Put that off to the side. You can stick this off to the side. We are going to go ahead and cut right above this gray line here and then we are going to cut just below this and I'll show you what that looks like. Stick this off to the side. We're going to need that for the cover. And you can stick this off in your reserves. Let's go ahead and cut out our door. And we are going to cut on the right side of the wood trim on each side. We need the door. We're going to set that off to the side along with our other pieces here. And we can go ahead and put this in our reserves. This is the piece that we want. So if you were to just flip this right on over, we can measure over 3 and 7 eighths of an inch and cut it. This goes in our reserves. Now what we are going to do is measure over five and three-eighths of an inch and cut it. 
This should fit nicely, giving a little bit of black. You'll have more on this side than that, and that's perfectly fine. We're going to apply glue to the back of this. Whoops. Seriously, that's not supposed to happen. I need to find my pen. Well, I got more pens, so it's floating around here somewhere. Okay. So now if you were just to put that right back behind, you'll see that it will fit. Let's get our other pieces. In your paper pack, you will find this sheet on the back. It looks like this. We're going to go ahead and trim off this first strip and then the second strip. And then this part will go in our reserves. Whoops. We're going to cut this one out too. We need that out. Okay. So we want this one, we'll leave that there. We want the owl, and this and these go in our reserves. This piece we need to cut into three strips. So what we're gonna do is we'll measure over four inches, cut it, measure over four inches, and cut it. Let's go ahead and ink around the edges. I'm using Toffee Crunch. And we're going to ink around the edges of all these pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. The first one gets placed a half inch down from the top of the black card stock. So I am going to place some glue on this, keeping my ruler there. And I'm just going to put it right here so at a half inch goes my first one. trying to keep it straight. Let's go ahead and place this one. This one is a half inch up from the bottom. Oh, that's good, right there. And then this one is just going to be placed right in the middle. Now for this, we are going to cut an oval out. If you have a Spellbinders oval die, you can place it right like this and it will cut it out. Okay. Um, those of you that do not have that, I'm going to tell you that you can put your ruler down and from the tip of his ear is one inch and from down below at the tip here it's three quarters of an inch. You're going to want to draw an oval and what you can do if you don't have anything is just kind of put some marks with light marks with pencil so that you can erase them and um, you can just go around and kind of look like so kind of just and then I should have put this over center right there sometimes it's just easier to just to start doing dotted lines and then you can cut out if you do lightly. After you're done doing light dotted lines to try and make this look like a nice oval. And I'll do it without my spell binders so that those of you that don't um, have. is All I'm going to do is if I'm going to do this by hand is doing light dots until it looks pretty close to an oval and it's just a matter of 
doing like that. That's pretty darn close. We will be inking around the edges. That's all I've done is just doing, you just start with the top, the bottom, put your sides on either side of the wing, then come in here and put a dot or a dash actually, and then you just keep closing in so that you can get a, a cut. So I did mine by hand, and you know me, I'm not that good. So I'm just going to come right on in and be brave and try to do this. And I can always clean it up to make a better oval. And if it looks doesn't look even by the time I'm done I can always fix that a little but we're gonna try as you can see my oval is not perfect but it isn't gonna really matter because once we ink around the edges it's gonna look okay I look like I have an egg shaped but it's gonna work and it's gonna look just fine okay inking around those edges And there we go. Add a little bit more here is good. Okay, so we got that. The next thing we want to do is put some 3D dots on the back. And I'm going to get into mine. going to place them. I make sure that this doesn't collapse anywhere so I am going to use quite a few because it is on my cover. Pretty good to me. So all I'm going to do now is take off the adhesive and I am going to center that between these two. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing here. And um, what, I'm, what I've done is um, I have actually, because we do have a little bit of overhang, just where that bottom row, you can see, uh, this should center it pretty good. Okay, so to get this on there, I am actually going to use glue and I'm just going to put it right around the edges. I know that that's... Okay. Let's stick it through. move on. Okay, there are a few things that we need to get at and one is in our reserves, this one. We're going to um, cut around to bring this image, to fussy cut around it, and we're also going to um, be careful because what we want to do is cut this out. So let me show you what that looks like. There's a couple other things we're going to need off this, but this is how you're going to want to cut your documented off the page. We're also going to need this, and all you have to do is just cut this out and this one, as, long, and as well as this. So I'll be back in just a second to show you the pieces. Okay, so this is how I cut out my airship. And then I'm going to ink around the edges really good. These are the two pieces of the, the gears, and we're going to ink around the edges. There's no need to cut in through the little, you know, the, the sprockets or whatever there. 
And here's this. And all we're going to do with this is cut in like a diamond. And we're going to ink around that really good. Let's set those off to the side. The next thing we're going to also do, and all of these scraps can go in our reserves. Okay, on this sheet, you will see some tiny little hats. These hats actually will fit on their heads, but it also fits on our owl's head. And the one that we want is this one. So when you're cutting in, be very careful because there are pieces in here that, of course, we're going to have to get at later. So I'm just going to cut my cut a little piece out of here around it first. I'm going to stick this off to the side and reserves for now. And I'm just going to cut around this and ink around the edges really good. Okay, I've inked around the edges of all my pieces here. And I'm going to grab um, two of the small 3Ds and I'm going to just place it on the back here of the hat. And then the hat gets placed on the owl's head. where you can still see his patch. Just like that. Okay, let's get this one ready. This one um, has the 3D foams and I am going to use bigger and smaller on this. And I can probably fit a small one right there. Okay, this is not quite ready. Put that off to the side. Documented. Okay. These can all be set off to the side. We will be adding them. Um, but first, we let's get our, our thing, our, uh, this, going. So if you were to grab this, um, where you're going to start is over to the left side and you're just going to come let's see how did I do that yet yeah. all I did was start on one side I am going to cut up and around to give it that that look I am going to trim off any white okay but here's how far you have to go before we trim that off is you when we place this down like this the side of this is not going to go over the edge. So we just want to place this down to see how far over we need to go. And it's right here. So, because this bottom piece is what goes here. And I am going to put this up so you can see better where you need to cut over here. As soon as you get that side cut, you'll be able to see that this is the one uh, right over here that is going to need to be cut like that. And then we're going to get going on that here. And then what we're going to do is do the same thing underneath here and then of course we're going to trim off that white. So let's go ahead and start in on that. Once you've got these cut out and this is what yours should look like, we do need to ink around the edges so let's do that. Now you will have this piece and this piece sitting here. This is all inked and one thing I did do so that it gives more of a 3D effect when I was inking is I went heavy just like this right along the bottom of these. Okay, if you were to set this down just like that and bring this up, um, we're going to mark where this needs to sit. So if you were just going to bring this up just like that to where you can still see the black. Okay. And if you didn't get even, this will even you out. 
you're just going to put, this is where this is going to be. So, once you have it like this, and you know where the border is going to sit, what you can do is remove that, and we're going to mark this before. Just put a pencil mark there so we know where the top of this needs to go. So we can glue this one down, actually. And I'm going to watch the left side to make sure that I don't go over the side there. And the keys should keep you straight. Hopefully, anyway, if you look. Okay, that's down. Let's grab this. and We can do this by hand. We're just going to cut right here up to get the white off. We're going to measure up what we need. And where this stops is right at the edge here. So I have this up so I know it fits across. I'm just going to cut straight on up now. So now when I'm after I'm done inking around the edges, when I place this down, it's going to look right. And over here, what you're going to want to do, and what I did anyway, is I just took my ink and went like this, right over here. So I'm going to ink around the edges really quick, and we're going to glue that piece down. We're doing this in sections, getting things ready here. And keep this handy. And this part is up. Just like that. Okay, this one right here is very simple. It just goes right here. Line that up with the side of this. Let's grab Let's grab documented. That can go down. Actually, nope, I went with, uh, let's see, looks like we want this first. And how this is going to be placed is the gear on the larger gear that's showing um, over the other large gear. That's how it's going to place down. And I'm just going to show you that this is going to, you're going to put this right like this, you see that? It's touching the side here, and then you can just bring it to where that that is, the bottom part is touching. Okay, we can go ahead and grab the other gear, but we're not going to place it yet. What we are going to do is um, put that documented down to get us where we need to be. Now on this you're going to eyeball it. And I'm going to show you. This part just goes just a hair down or over the side there. Whoops. This part is barely over this, and this part is more over on mine. But it isn't that far down, and it's hanging over the gear a little bit. Okay, let's see. This and this. 
Now one thing is, is we are not going to put glue underneath this little prop. We're going to slide a gear, a wooden gear underneath that here in a minute. But what you're going to do is to make sure that things get covered is you're going to just place this down like so. And if you notice, it comes up slightly over the ledge. These down here come down to touch your black and it's partially only covering uh, the top corner of document. Don't glue it down yet. This is where, and I'm going to prop mine up so it stays up. This is where you are going to place some glue on this. And looking at it while you have that down, this is where you can slide this in behind just for now until whoops until it so that it looks right bring that up more you want your airship to cover this the line is what we're after So right there should be good for me. Okay, time for the airship. Remember, watch to make sure this doesn't go over the edge when you're doing this. Down. You have this piece here, and if you were to just put it right up underneath, you probably still can slip it right underneath that. If not, cut a curve in it. Um, the thicker part of the trim faces in. All I'm going to do is just stick that right like that. Come down. And then I'm going to mark the edge with my pencil where it needs to be snipped. And that is right across here. And I'm going to ink around the edges. And I'm going to glue that down. Let's get into our gear pack. And we're going to eat two of these gears to silver. We want this one and this one. So set those off to the side. Those are the ones we're going to do in silver. There is also this one. We're going to be using the lighter side. Put that off and that stays like that. We're going to be using this. And we are going to be using this. The rest of these, I think that that was it on the front. Yep, that's it. So silver. Any silver will do. I am going to grab a dauber here and make sure that this is a clean one. Nope. Where'd my silver? I just cleaned a bunch of these. It took me forever. This one says juniper, but it's not anymore. Okay. All I'm going to do is go around on this. And I am going to give that an opportunity for the uh, ink to uh, absorb into that. This one is also silver. And all I'm doing is the front. I'm not doing the back or the sides. Just the front. Because the black is here and we want that. I am going to apply glue to the back of this. This is the one that slides right underneath this tail. And what you can do is put a little glue underneath that little tail now because we're going to want to make sure that that doesn't uh, flip up on us. So. so all we have to do is place that down and the tail gets placed on it. And we're going to hold that for a minute. And I didn't give my 
thing a chance to dry and soak in. Okay, this one, all we're going to do is put some glue on the back. And it goes right in the middle of this one. And you're going to have to let the glue dry. I need to prop this up. There we go. Okay. And where'd my other wheel go? Where'd my gear go? Okay, for this one, um, it goes right like this. So you're going to put some on either side here. Make sure. And it just goes half on this, half up there. This one, put some glue on that, goes right here next to it. And this one, we're going to put the glue on the dark side of the wood. And we have to let this dry. Just places right like that. Whoops. I think I got a little too much there. We need to get some of our cutouts here. And I'm going to, I think you can see okay. I'm going to bring this up so you can take a look. Okay, this is where this comes in. Just clip it, and all you're going to do is clip a little three quarters of the way up here. You're just going to do that. You're going to ink around the edges. You don't have to be real persnickety about this, okay? The larger one just slips right over here, and I guess we should have glued that down first, but that's all right. Just like that. There we go. And we can use snippets of the other one to slide in there. But this one, we're just going to lay right like that. And this goes in there. I got to ink. And your gears probably are not quite dry yet, so this will work. Mine aren't. Actually, we need a, another thing right there. It's on our cutout. And that's what the issue is. Okay, we need two things off of here. And the first one is, where is it? This one. Now, when I cut it out, I didn't cut the notches out. I just cut around for a round wheel. We need that one. So we're going to cut that one out. And we also need the one that is going to go in here and lay over this. So, alrighty, let's see. These two right here. Let's get in there and get those out. And again, you do not have to cut the notches out of this small uh, gear. We're just going to ink around the edges really good. So let's go ahead and get those ready. Okay. <clears throat> what we're going to do here is grab the smaller one and just stick that right in there, like so. And that will cover up the, the difference. We're going to take this one. I cut mine a little small. We're going to set that right like this. You can grab your ink if you need to go like that. Perfect. Okay, next is this one, which we had. And this is very simple. You only need to put glue on half of it. And that's going to place right here. Okay. 
on our cutout sheet, we want these goggles. So we're just going to go ahead and cut out these goggles. They're really easy to cut out. And then we're going to ink around the edges. And um, you do not need to cut out the inside of here. I did not. So let's get that. Okay. Let's ink around our edges here. This is one that needs the uh, 3D, but we only need to put the 3D on this side, right behind here, because it lays right across like this. So this is what mine looks like. Okay, it's time to take off the backing. Everything is sticking to me right now. And I'm just going to apply a little glue. And this is going to overlap just a hair over. Just like that. Okay, we can get going on the, the side now. This page is, the front is complete. So we're going to move on over to the spine now. And that is really easy. Let's spread our album out. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this off with our paper cutter right underneath um, the door there. Let's ink around our edges and then we can get our other pieces out. But this can get glued down now. So. Okay, you can put glue for this. You're going to bring this, you're going to center this and bring it all the way down to the bottom. You can use the stripes to keep yourself straight. They will help you because those are straight. And we're just going to place that down just like this. In our cutouts, we're going to get, I'm going to grab my other scissors if I can find them. In our cutout, we are going to grab the wings a lot quicker for me just to cut these out. Now on the wings, I'm going to show you something really quick that might help save you some time. Um, for the wings, when you come up this way to divide them, you can go ahead and just chop them straight across like that. And an easy way to fussy cut the feathers out and I should be using my other scissors for this. Easy way to get those um, things is just come in at an angle and then almost like a triangle, just, just like that. Rather than try to maneuver and stuff, this will be plenty good because we are going to ink around the edges of this whole thing. So. And um, also, there is a larger hat, whoops, right here. We're going to cut that out too, and we're going to ink around the edges. We're going to get this piece put together. However, we are not going to glue it down yet because we still have stuff to get here. But all you are going to do is lay this out. And again, don't put glue underneath your your uh, wings there. Um, we're just going to lay that down for now. Take a look. We are going to put that right like that. So mine, you don't want to go over the edge. Why I'm having you lay it down is so that to see because we all may have sliced it at different points. We're just going to make sure we're going to clear the sides here. Mine, I'm, I'm looking and I'm just about touching on the bottom right down here, like so. Where's white? I think you can see this, but you grab something white. 
so mine are going to go like that. I can add a little glue here for the hat now because I know how they're supposed to lay and get my hat down. And I'm going to set this off to the side. Let's get our pieces. Okay, we're going to grab our second sheet out of the paper pack that looks like this. We do still have this sitting off to the side. Now this is for the back of our album, so we're going to leave that alone. What we want to do here is right underneath the window sill here, we're just going to cut straight across. We're going to get at the rest of that uh, in just a moment. What we're going to do now is on this side of the window sill, you're going to go straight up here and straight up on this side, and we're going to cut off that white bit. Stick this stuff off to the side in your reserves. This is what you want. Let's ink around the edges. Let's get some glue out. And this is just going to place right up at the top, right underneath the, the black there. And we're going to try and keep that even with the sides of this. We need to get this out again. So on the right side of the black line, we're going to trim there. And then right, um, let's see, how far did I go? Yep, yeah, right underneath the, the dark uh, greenish blue line, smoke colored line, we're going to cut there and I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is what you should have. Let's grab our scissors and trim straight up so we don't have none of that white. And all we're going to do here is place this down. We'll grab our pencil and we're going to make a mark where we need to cut. Let's ink around the edges. And glue it down. Right there. Okay. Let's grab this piece. And I have piece of white that needs to be snipped off. There we go. Let's add some glue to this. And this gets placed right here where the bottom of the feathers, and it's centered, hits the top of that door jam and the hat is centered between the two lines as best we can. Okay, last page in your paper pack. What we are going to get is we are going to cut out timeless memories. Okay, place this down so that timeless memories would be centered in, be in between the sides there. And we're going to grab our pencil and we're going to make a mark on each side. Oops. And we are going to trim that to fit. We're going to ink around our edges. And throughout this album, I've inked around the edges pretty thick on this. We're going to apply our glue and right on the line there to keep us straight, we're going to place this just like that. Grab this and place it down here across the top. Make a mark with your pencil. Do that, and we are going to ink around the edges. And then we're going to glue that down. Okay, that's done. 
we're on to the back. So the back is really simple here. I'm going to turn this over. So grab your piece and just lay it across. And you're going to bring it all the way to the corner right here. And you're going to make a mark and we're going to cut that. And I should be using my paper cutter. So we're just going to cut that straight up. Now all we have to do is line that right on up like this. And where it hits, where it hits the side here of your cream paper is make a mark. Where'd that pencil mark go? There it is. And we're just going to cut straight up. We're also going to cut around the bottom to give it that curves and we're going to ink around that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to glue that right on down. So let's go ahead and do that. One last thing before we go in um, to the inside of the album is you see this brown uh, door trim? We're going to cut this straight on down on these two pieces and these are in our reserves and the door used to sit I think well not quite in there but anyway uh, we're gonna grab those two strips just of the door jam so let's cut those we're gonna snip off the white and what you're gonna want to do is stick that right along the side but yet yeah, you're gonna grab your other piece of your door jam we're actually going to stick that right underneath there so once you've got it something like this looking like that we're just going to trim this to fit. We're going to ink around the edges of both of these and then we are going to glue it down. This one goes down first just like that. So let's do that. Okay, Grab this little green piece down here. Let's ink around it. Place a little glue and it just goes right at the bottom here. Whoops, put a little too much glue. That's all right. Now remember, when you're placing this, those stripes are really going to help you keep that straight. Okay, for now we are done with all of this. Let's move on to the inside.